love of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam love of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil mursalin amma ba'd fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim Assalatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Assalatu wassalamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah. Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habiballah. Assalatu wassalamu alayka ya Nabiyallah. Assalatu wassalamu alayka ya Nabiyallah. Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah. Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nurullah. MashaAllah. Viewers of my channel, welcome to this special series of programs during the blessed month of Rabi Nushi. As you can see, in the studio the studio is all lit up and i hope and i pray that all of your houses all around the world are lit up to celebrate this blessed month and in this blessed month we remember the coming of the mercy to all the worlds the final messenger and the best of all creation but in the midst of all of this he was the greatest role model as well and in light of this this series of programs our role model in it we're going to discuss different aspects of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life and understand that the part he played 1400 years ago is still significant today significant tomorrow and significant till the day of judgment and we can continuously learn from his life of how we should live our lives before we begin we're going to give you a blessing of reciting through the park upon the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is narrated that the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the one who sends salat upon me once allah azawajal shows 10 blessings upon him and the one who sends salat upon me 10 times allah azawajal shows 100 blessings upon him and the one who sends salat upon me a hundred times, Allah Akbar. Allah Azza wa Jal inscribes between both of his eyes that this person is exempted from hypocrisy and the fires of hell. And on the day of judgment, he will be raised amongst the martyrs. Allah Akbar. Viewers of the channel, please make a habit. We've said it many, many times. Please make a habit of reciting the Park upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because who knows that one extra Durudhi Park that we recite today might make all the difference on the day of judgment. Viewers of the channel, in this series of program, our role model. We're discussing different aspects about the life of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you look at the history books, when you look at the people who've researched all of the great personalities around the world from, from the beginning of time till now, many historians have said that in this category, in this category, there is nobody that is comparable to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is his role as a leader. His role as a leader. He was the greatest leader of all time. And even to this day, there have been books that have been written on it. There was one famous book, but that was written by an American, Michael H. Hart. And when he wrote about the most influential people, he put the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the top because of his leadership qualities, because of his leadership skills. And inshallah, today we're going to talk about the life of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a leader. And hopefully, if we look at today and our lives, you know, you may say that you're not a leader. You may say that I'm not a leader. So what do I need to learn from the life of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? But the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that each of you, each of you is a shepherd and each is responsible for his flock. So we all have our responsibilities. We're leaders in our households, we're leaders in our workplaces. So again, we can look at the life of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and hopefully we can learn something. MashaAllah with us in the studio again, MashaAllah Tawfiq by Zarab. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you Tawfiq? Are you okay? Alhamdulillah. Again, a very unique topic Tawfiq by. And I think when, when we came up with the list of topics and I myself thought to myself that, you know, is this relevant to everybody? Is it relevant? Because not all of us are leaders. But when I came across the hadith where the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that each of you, every one of you is a shepherd yeah. and look after your flock. And that made me reflect and realize that yes, we are all leaders in one way or another. We all have these responsibilities in one way or another that we are looking after people or managing people or in some form, whatever, we are a leader. Khalba, you know, the word leader is so broad. It fits into many categories or it fits into many departments. For example, uh, the captain, you know, in a sports, in a, in a game, he's a leader. Yeah, if you look at someone uh, where you're working, even in a warehouse, someone supervising you, the supervisor or the manager is the leader. Likewise, you can, you can look at any department of life, any profession, the businessmen, the, the president, the, the kings, whichever field you look at, even in the army, you have leaders. Every aspect, you know, you cannot say that you can avoid a leader in your life. 
Now, in any form, any profession, even a teacher, if you go to a school, you're a teacher, you're a leader. Yeah, and if you're the teacher, and from the teachers, you have a leader, yes. head teacher. Yes. Yeah, so there's loads of, you know, uh, you know different uh, professions you can look at. There's loads of people who have this uh, responsibility of leadership. And if you were to do a bit of research uh, of leadership qualities, and you know, to how, what makes a good, good leader, what, what do you need to have? And that, that is the key thing. And you'll find, in, you know, if you open any book, Know, uh, on this particular topic, or if you re if you research on the internet, if you watch any you know programs, you'll find that certain topics they are they are generic, they are common. And for the, for example, one of them is one of the lead one of the qualities of a leader is that that individual must be trustworthy. So hard. that individual must be honest in his character. You know, if there's questions about his character, especially the people who are below him, if they question his a standard, you know, his uh, personality, then there's issues. Then that person will not make a good leader. Yeah. So you, you have to look at the individual himself. And there's so many things that, you know, a common person, a leader must have. And then we knew one by one, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making it already open here. Open a book, get them qualities out. And you'll, you'll get a list at least what, 10, 15 of points. These are the points that a leader must have. Then now you turn towards the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa One by one, you'll notice not one, many examples, many instances and examples from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will find that shows you that in each department or each quality that leader has, you'll find that our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is the best role model for us. For example, I'm going to start off with the one I just mentioned to you, honesty and trustworthy. These are very important. Now, if you look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not just those who love him, who have respect for him, those who believe in him, those who follow him, but also those who, you could say, they reject his message. Yeah, you can, and you see the example of when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam announced his prophethood at the age of 40, when he gathered the local community together. The, the Quraysh, I mean, they were all there. So many people were there. there many leaders were there of, them, of the tribes. They were there and when Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala spoke in front of them, what was it? If I was to say what is behind the mountain, would you believe, believe me? And all the discussion that happened, they all said, I believe you because you are Sadiq, you are Ameen. Yes. Yeah? Even in that example, you'll find that, you know, for whatever reason that those people who rejected the actual message of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam, but they could not deny the fact that the 40 years of life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi that was in front of them, they could not deny that he is the most honest and most trustworthy. I think in the same way that when the, the first uh, Hijrat took place and they went to Abyssinia, yes. and the question was asked that, is he a honest person? Is he a trustworthy oh. person? And the people that were there, that were trying to get the Muslims to come back, they even had to admit to the fact that the Prophet ﷺ was an honest and, uh, and had that integrity in him. And I think that's a very, very important aspect of any leadership that in any state, you know, if you, if you were to bring it to today's uh, form and you give the examples there of a teacher, of a head teacher, of, of a manager, of anything like that, if any field that you can even think about, if that person doesn't have that honesty inside them, if that person doesn't have that integrity inside them, he's not going to last long. True. Sooner or later, he's going to get caught out. And when he gets caught out, then all of that trust, because a leader needs to have that trust in the people that are below him. And that trust is dependent on his character, on his integrity, on his honesty. So if he loses that honesty or loses that integrity, then these people, they will not trust him. And if they will not trust him, they will not follow him. The the saying that trust is like a sticker. Yeah, you know, I've got a badge here today, Nalan Sharif, mashallah. Well, like, say, say if, if you're a good boy at school, you had a, you had a sticker. Well done, Khalid, mashallah, you don't really go today. Yeah, you had a sticker, <laughs> reminding you of the old days, mashallah. I never got any stickers. <laughs> Subhanallah. But you know, with them stickers, obviously they look nice, don't they? But they stay with you for some hours. Yeah. But then, as, as a child, you know, the kids, they take you off. And when they try to put it back on, it doesn't have the same, you know, the effect. The effect. Yeah. And then you, and then if you take, if you take it off, put it back on a few times, you know, you, you do that, then a it time will come. Effect. It will not just lose the fact, if, you, want, the if you really want the badge or the sticker, you'll have to keep your hand there. Yeah. As soon as you move your hand, it's going to fall off. That's how trust is. You know, once you lose trust 
it's so hard to build it. And yeah. sometimes, depending on what you did, what you, what's the stupid thing that you did, you know, sometimes as a human, you can make a mistake. You genuinely made a mistake, but in the eyes of the rest, you made a big, you know, that was a, mm -hmm. that was a big problem. And due to that, you lost trust. It could be financial issue, whatever it was. It could be uh, you were in a position of uh, responsibility or care, and you breached you know, your, your role. And in that case, sometimes you, know, you don't get a second chance. Yeah. yeah. I remember it's just a little story that has came to my mind. My father used to tell me this story. And he, there's this person, he had a, a very pious son, a very pious son, a good son. And his father came home one day and said, son, when I go out, people talk about people. They talk about this child, they talk about this child, they talk about him, they talk about him. But nobody ever mentions your name. Nobody but ever mentions your name. Nobody says that, you know, your son this or your son that. He said, do you want to hear my name? And the father said, well, yeah. So he went out and he did something wrong. <laughs> he went something wrong. And next day, that news was all around the town. <laughs> and everybody's saying, oh, that's such a such a such. And he came home and he said, you know, everybody's talking about you. And he said, exactly. That's what you wanted. And that's what you've got. So normally the people that, you know, that are the honest, genuine people, people don't, you know, don't praise them all, right? Because it's an accepted quality and it's something that we should put into our children. And like you say, the 40 years, the 40 years, you look at the, the hikmat, the wisdom of them 40 years. Because without doubt, if Allah Azza wa Jal wished, he could have announced the prophethood a lot earlier. But them 40 years were there for a reason, I firmly believe. And that was to put the foundation down that everybody realized that he is the Al Amin, he is the Sadiq, he is the trustworthy, most trustworthy people. Even to the extent that that event comes to mind where they were rebuilding the Kaaba. Yes. Yeah, and, and the stone was there. And they, there was argument. They, they were arguing about who's going to put yeah. the stone. And, and they said the next person that comes in, and it was the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that came in, and all of the tribes, all of these feuding tribes that had been arguing and arguing and fighting. And, and in history, they've been killing each other. Okay. As soon as they saw the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, Labbaik, whatever the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he comes and does it, then we have no issue. Subhanallah. And that, how did that happen? That didn't happen overnight. And, and look, at, look at the decision that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made at that time. Even then, the how, how he united all the tribes. G -g -g. Subhanallah, and then collectively agreed. So they all took part in the... It's the, the hikmat yes. and wisdom of it. So not only was, you know, in, in the, there you see two aspects of his leadership. One, you see the fact that because of his honesty, because of his integrity, he was, you know, uh, valued in that sense. But even in that position, when he was valued as a leader, he still kept everybody on board. SubhanAllah. And again, that's a, a huge quality. That as a leader, he didn't just say, okay, so I'm the leader today. Okay, and he puts the stone on. Because that would have been accepted. But his hikmat was that, look, I've got an opportunity now that although I've been given this respect, I've been given this honor, I've been given this position, I will still use this to unite people yeah. and that again you know it wasn't something i planned but that again is a unique quality of the prophet of allah sallallahu so throughout his life he could have just ordered yeah. once he denounced prophethood once he had the followers once people were with him he could have said you do this you do this you do this you do and he could have done it and they would have listened there's, 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 there's many examples like that where you mentioned that you know as a team leader working with the team you know doing the groundwork you know even in the state of battles so you know the the that trench Khandak, you know, digging, digging the trench, yeah, making the masjid, making the building the masjid, and you know, physically being part of the yes. rest of the public, and you know, giving them the love. Another beautiful quality of a leader is that you love and have respect for those who are under you, the, those who are inferior, or those who are on your team. And I'll give you an example of this. Sayyidina Zaid bin Harisa radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a companion, is a Sahabi of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, he was, uh, if you look at his history, he was a child at the beginning and uh, he was gifted to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the marriage of Sayyidatuna Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. So after the marriage, and there's a whole history behind it, how did he come to that household? But just, just the main points I'll mention, that when Sayyidatuna Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha got married to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she gifted Sayyidatuna Zaid to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sayyidina Zaid, you know, loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much, so much. And people were aware that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved him so much that people used to call Zaid that he is the son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So people, some people used to call him Zaid, the son of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in reality, he, his father is someone else. 
Yeah, and as a coincidence, his father and his family members were concerned. They were worried. They, were they, they didn't know where they were looking for him. Yeah, and it was uh, the, the Hajj. Uh, may Allah Taala take us on the journey of Hajj. I mean. This the the pilgrimage, the beautiful journey of Hajj. So as a as a custom, people came towards the Hajj from his family, and they saw they saw his child, and they realized this is Zaid, and he is in the custody of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa So when these family members went back to his household and they told Zaid's father that your son, we've seen him, we found him and he's, he's enjoying, he's happy, so he's in good place, he's safe. Yeah? So now his father and with his uncle, both of them, possibly few of the people came with this intention to Makkah Sharif to find uh, the house of Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam and when they came in the court of Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam what did they say? What did they, say? they say Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we, we have heard that you are a beautiful, you have a beautiful character you are a, you're a great individual now you don't do injustice to anyone and you're not the one who comes to break ties you're the one who comes to mend ties you know, to make, you know, to reconcile people and Subhanallah, the father and the uncle is saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zaid is my son. And could you please, uh, instead of saying, can I, can I have him back? But because it was a culture of slavery at that time, so they said, you know, you can ask, you can, you can have whatever you want. Tell us, you know, how much you want, okay, you know, the money or wealth. We'll give you all that. Please give us, give us my son back. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he heard the, these words of the father, and he said, no, I'm, I'm not here to... You no know, break people or take take people away. I'm here to get them together, and Allah so Allah. Prophet sallallahu uh, alaihi wasallam called Sidna Zaid radiyallahu taala anhu and said to him that first said to him, do you recognize these people? And he did. Now as a child, he recognized that's my father, that's my uncle, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then said to him, Oh Zaid, I give you the permission. You choose. You can either stay with me. Or oh, you Allah, can stay Allah. with your father. And subhanAllah, Sidna Zaid radiallahu ta'ala anhu immediately said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to stay with you. Allah, Allah, Allah. And now his father was hearing these words, Oh Zaid, what are you doing? I'm your father. I'm your father. Yeah, you, you're ready to, you're, you're, accept, you're accepting to live in slavery compared to you know, being yeah. freed. And with your own family. Yeah, and being with your own family, what are you doing? And Sayyidina Zayd radiallahu ta'ala anhu at that moment, the words that he used to describe the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala you know, was so unique and so emotional. But if you look at it in one from one angle, Sayyidina Zayd is a slave. And the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala is a master. You know, generally, obviously, everyone wants to live in freedom. But this slavery is such that there's no freedom like this. Yeah? And this personality that I am with, Allah. I know there is no one like him in the whole world. Allah. Yeah, and look at his attachment and his love for Rasulullah sallallahu but ta'ala. This is, before, he this is before the announcement of the prophethood. Allah. Yeah? Allah. And you know, this shows that our beloved Aqa Madani Mustafa, the master of the universe sallallahu ta'ala, he used to love, you know, even the slaves, even the people on the streets. He, he spread, he's here to spread the love. Yeah, he shared the love and you know, as a leader, one of the you know, top quality of a leader is not to just rule you know, over a state, but the best part is to rule the hearts. Allah. Yeah, the win, win the hearts and rule over them. And this is one example. Yeah. Another ex so, a few examples come to my mind, inshallah, we'll discuss them in a few moments. We've got a small package here for you at a moment, a little package on the benefits of celebrating Milad. Inshallah, listen to this package and come back and we'll continue with this topic. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amir ahl sunnat Shaykh Tariqat, the leader and founder of Dawat Islami, Hazrat Allama Maulana, Abu Bilal Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri, may his shadow remain upon us. He says that the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal is a very beautiful day for me. The reason why is Amir al Sunnat, why does he love the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal? Because that is the day our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born. And it says, let me tell you a story. Amir al Sunnat, he mentions uh, one of the hadiths of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one of his booklets. And he says that after the death of Abu Lahab, some of his family members dreamt about that he had a he had been suffering problems and troubles after he passed away. Upon inquiring the state after his death, he replied 
after departing from you, I have not received any goodness. Thereafter, indicating towards a hole under his thumb, he said, Accept for this. There is no goodness for me. I am fed with water through it because I had forced, I had freed my slave Thuwaybah. Subhanallah. So just imagine Abu Lahab, who is he? He is one of the most strongest enemies of Islam. Yet when the Prophet ﷺ was born, he freed one of his slave girls and Allah Ta'ala even rewarded him for that as well. That his punishment is taken, he, gives, he gets water from the finger that he freed his slave girl. Subhanallah, as Muslims, when we celebrate the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, do you not think that Allah Ta'ala will give us blessings in our lives? course he will so celebrate milad of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with full zest and mashallah and, and mood and alhamdulillah azawajal, with full muhabbat and love for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam viewers of mother channel you saw the one of the benefits of celebrating Milad and we should all celebrate Milad, show our happiness in our homes and let people know that we are proud. We are proud to be of the Ummah of the Prophet of Allah How fortunate we are that we are of that Ummah. We are the lucky ones, we are the fortunate ones if only we realize. Views of the channel, you're watching our role model and today we're talking about another unique topic with relates to the Prophet, the life of the Prophet of Allah and that is his role as a leader. As a leader and to feedback before the break he mentioned a couple of the qualities of a leadership he mentioned the fact that integrity and trust and, and again without doubt there are many many examples and to feedback give the odd one or two examples there the next thing he mentioned was the fact that the keeping you know the compassion that he had the love that he had for all the people that we were there and the fact that even before he announced prophethood because you know things come to my mind that when the prophet of allah sallallahu had not announced prophethood then obviously his status in the eyes of people was different because he is a person of the community and obviously once he's announced prophethood and you believe then when you believe you follow and you listen without without question as a true follower should listen without question but before that before he announced prophethood his character was such that even then his character was so exemplary and so compassionate he had the example that the he by beautifully gave with regards to the slave that he had said now zahid that he had the opportunity to leave and go with his parents, go with his father, go with his uncle. But he said, no, I want to stay here because this is the best place. This is the best person. There is no person like that. And that, the amazing thing about that incident, which I personally think was the fact that at the time, prophethood had not been announced. And so then 40 years that the Prophet of Allah lived amongst people, what kind of, what kind of, you know, even today, you cannot imagine that anybody can live in such a way that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived. And the other thing that he mentioned Tawfiq Bay just before the break, and something came to my mind and I mentioned it to Tawfiq Bay, was the fact that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ruled people's hearts. SubhanAllah. He ruled people's hearts and, he, he, and the hearts came close to his. And as he was talking and he was saying that, I started to smile and I started to think about our Shaykh Tariqat, Amir al-Sunnah, Mawlana Muhammad al-Yas Atar Qadri. May Allah Azza wa keep his shadow upon us. And, you know, without a doubt, in the current time, he's a leader, he's a ruler of people's hearts. Yeah, you know, he's, he's traveled to very few countries. He may have been to India once, maybe gone to the United Arab Emirates, you know, and a few times. But his love, his compassion, his message has got all around the world. And he's ruling people's hearts all around the world. And that, again, is a perfect example for us in modern times of how we need to try and live our lives. Jeetu Fibai, sorry. No, uh, before I move to the next point, I just want to add something with, uh, regarding the, you know, the incident we were talking about. Uh, when the, the Sayyidina Zayad's father, when he came in the court of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you look at that example, what did, he, what did he come with? What intention? He came with this intention that I will offer the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam some wealth and I will buy the son back. Yeah. So it would have been just to do that. Yes. Yeah, it was a right, it was Adal. Yeah, it's a just. Uh, so, but Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't want money. Yeah? Instead of, instead of doing justice, yeah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did ihsan on him, did favor on him that, look, I don't need your son. If, if, if you, I've come, I want you, you people to be together. I want you to be united. Yeah? So for my side, it's, he's okay to go. 
So prophets as a leader, you know, you talk about leader, this, this aspect is important as well. That as a leader, you don't just be, you know, just do justice, but many times you will need to do favor on your team and do such favors now upon those who are under you that you're all, you're, you know, their whole, in the whole life, they are, they are indebted to you. Yeah, they will remember your favors and like the, we, the example that you gave in about uh, Shaykh Tariqa Damir al-Sunnat, the Dham al the, the, the work that he's done, the services of deen that is front of us, this is, if you look at it, that he's done so much favor for the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that for us, it's a big debt. Yes. Yeah, just looking at his works that he's done, for us, we, we, we could spend our whole life and we won't be able to repay his debt. Right. Yeah. Right. And, the, and this, if you look at this, the Amir al-Sunnat, you know, how is he running it? How is he ruling over so many people? Not by, you know, military power or something, or he's got some or special resources, power. even financial power. Yeah, what it is, is taqwa, yeah. piety, fear of Allah. It's love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And you know, his whole life is about embodiment of following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa You know, being simple, you know, simple and, you know, and spreading simplicity as well. You know, telling people, look, you can live a simple life, which a lot of people, you know, you know, we talk about peer pressure sometimes, you know, and as a family tribe and culture, sometimes you get, you look at people in your area, you think, no, you have to move up. You have to move, why am I behind? Why am I behind all the time? But when you look at the life of these great individuals, you think you can live your life in simplicity as well. At the same time, have a leadership qualities. Okay? Well, back to our main topic. If you look at our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his leadership qualities, one, one key thing that we see in, in a good leader is that individual, that personality has a broad vision. Subhanallah. Yeah. He's not a limited minded. Yeah, whenever he decides something, this is not something just to resolve a short term, you know, short, you know, uh, short term solution. It's more of a long term solution, something that will benefit the mass, benefit the generations to come, yes, yeah, centuries to come. And in this case, from the life of the Prophet, you will find many decisions that have took, taken place, uh, for a decision that Prophet made, them, them guiding principles that he gave, they were not just for those people, only for the Sahaba, only for the Arabs. But them decisions, even now, after 1400 years, they are so beneficial for us. We are so, we are benefiting from them. We are enjoying them. I remember Tawfiq, by, as you were talking, it came to my mind. Alhamdulillah, I was blessed to make the journey of Hajj. And I had, mashallah, a very uh, pious scholar with me. And when we were on the plains of Arafat, and just as it was getting towards the end, when we were about to leave, when you could see, you know, as far as the eye could see, you could see Muslims. And I said to the pious Mawlana Sahib, you know, how many people are here today? He said, only Allah knows how many people are here. I said, but isn't it amazing that feeling that we get here? He said, but one thing you need to realize. I said, what? He said, you need to realize the wisdom and the vision of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I said, what do you mean? He said, when Hajj was made fard upon the Muslims, a Muslim said to the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is it fard every year? Allah Akbar. And he said, Think to yourself, Allah, if the Prophet of Allah, 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 Allah had said yes, Allah, Allah, if he had said yes Allah, at that moment in time, Allah. when it was practical, it was practical for people to perform the Hajj every year. Yeah, Maybe how many Muslims? 100,000 Muslims? 200,000 Muslims? It was possibly practical. But at that time, the Prophet of Allah said no. Allah. And he said, think about it. Allah. And, and I sat down there and I'm thinking, you know what? That's amazing that the Prophet of Allah had that vision that that time will come where it will be impossible for the Muslims to perform the Hajj every year, you know? And so that wisdom, that vision, and I cannot think at the moment, no better example comes to my mind rather than that one. You know, there's a few more examples that I want to share on the same topic that our beloved Prophet ﷺ made certain decisions with this intention to make it easy for the Ummah and make it easy for the future generations. One of the examples that I can share with you today is that if our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said that if I had not taken care of the difficulties of my Ummah, I would have made miswak first upon yes. them and for every time they do wuzu. Yes. And this could have been first. Yes. Why is it not first? 
because the Prophet to not make it hard, to, easy to, not make it diff- to make it easy for us. Another example of this, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if, it, if I had not taken the care of the difficulties of my Ummah, I surely would have ordered to delay Isha Salah yes. to one third of the night or to midnight. Because it's superior to delay the Isha delay Namaz. The isha but, but it's better to delay it, but it's not made fard. Yes. Yeah, it's not made compulsory on us. Allah it's made Allah easy for Allah us, Allah. Easy for looking, us. At our, to, to, looking at our ease today. Allah yeah? Allah. And similarly, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says that if I had not taken care of the weakness of the old and the ill pay, Ill of the illness of the patients, I surely would have delayed this Salah, which is Isha Namaz till midnight. So look at this, subhanAllah, our Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa not just one occasion, there are so many examples that maybe uh, uh, if you look at that, if you study that in, in that particular account, you think it was for that moment, but no. The message of Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa is long lasting, it's a universal message. These, these principles, they will continue, not just in the Arab world, not just in the Asian world, but around the world, whichever culture you are from, you, you are able to follow those principles. The biggest example is the glorious Quran. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's a leader and he's left principles. He's left the last message for us in the form of the Quran. And this Quran is a universal message. Yeah, not, not limited to any time, not limited to any culture, not limited to any language. But subhanAllah, you know, even now the principles are very fresh. When you act upon them, you feel the you know, spirituality. You can you know you feel you're connected with, with you know with, with your Rabb, with your creator. Yeah. We were talking about broad vision. So what is that broad vision that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with? And that broad vision is that if you believe in Allah and you follow me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you act upon Islam that in return you will enter Jannah. SubhanAllah. Look at this broad Subhanallah. vision. Subhanallah. Yeah? And in Jannah, what is the, the biggest gift that a person will be given? This gift could have been hidden, could have been kept secret. But look at, look at the mercy of my Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he, he exposed, he told everyone that in Jannah the, you will get the full Jannah is full of mercy and blessings and bounties. But the biggest gift in Jannah is that as a human being, as a Muslim, you will be able to see your own Rabb, Allah, your Allah. 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 This is Allah. the broad vision that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has instilled in the hearts of the Muslims. Allah. And this, this message, look at this, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with this broad vision and look at how the communities accepted this mission. From the moment when the when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam conveyed the call, invited people to Islam, the first person to accept Islam is Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu from the adults. From the ladies, Sayyidatuna Khadijatul Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was first. From the children, it's, it is Sayyidina uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And from the slaves, it was Sayyidina Zaid bin Harissa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So these were the first new Muslims. First individuals to accept the message. However, the, if you study the Makki life, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It was so difficult. There were so many, so many turns and so many difficulties and pains that the Muslims had to go through. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself physically was abused by people. And not just you know, verbally, but physically. There's, you, there's many accounts where you see he, you know, he was thrown stoned. He was told that the, 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 the blood used to flow on his blessed body and the, the land part were full of blood. Many incidents happened like this. Yeah? But the Prophet Sallallahu remained firm, steadfast and okay. continued preaching, spreading the message. And today, look how many people have accepted Islam. In, if you look at the world population now, Muslims, I think if I'm correct, they're at least over 2 billion, if not near 3 billion. Is it 2.7 billion? No, it's 1.7 billion. 1.7. Approx, call it 2 billion. Yeah. Yeah? Around 2 billion of pe- uh, people in the, around the world are Muslims. And, but it's not this. Look at this now. From the first Muslims who accepted Islam all the way up to now. Alhamdulillah. Just imagine how many billions of people yeah, accepted the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is called leadership. Yeah, and not just this, you mentioned the example of this individual who in 1978, he's a Michael Hart, he wrote that book. And not just him, many other people who are not Muslims, 
Yeah, they have wrote, they have written no, not praises of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And there's a shade I want to share, but it's not coming to our mind now. Very famous shade, you know, in Urdu language. It was written by someone from India. He was not a Muslim, but some, when you read that, them lines, you think it's a, it definitely is written by a Muslim. But no, that's that. Should, it was written by a non-Muslim. But look how much they express their love. So even those who are not in the faith, but when they are neutral. When they study the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they will come to this conclusion that this individual, this personality was that individual who changed the planet. Allah. He's a savior of the, of the people. Allah. He's, he's guided people towards the right path. He's protected the rights of so many people. Now you can only understand that if you know and you have studied the life of humanity, before the announcement of the prophethood. In fact, before the arrival on the earth of the Prophet If people have studied that life, how, how they call it dark ages. You study and you see how, how, how it was, you know, it's so, it's- We mentioned yesterday, didn't we, the, the, the role as a husband, the fact that how women were treated prior to the, the, the arrival of the Prophet of Allah the, the daughters. Yes, you know, buried alive. It's so people, you know, if they, if they want to give a birth to a daughter, they used to hide it. And sometimes, if, even if they hid it for five, six years, and it came out, he, there's a daughter in the house, even then the cruel father would not just, you know, he will not, he will not be, you know, he will not just like, you know, think, oh, it's my daughter, shall I leave her? No, even then, because of his pre, you know, pre ignorant Allah. mindset, he would still take her and bury her alive. Yeah, that's how it was. But Prophet Sallallahu came, uh, protected the rights of women, gave, you know, the, if you look at the concept of slavery, this, this was an old concept. Very ancient concept, yeah. You know, the, the, you heard the, story, the the famous incident of Prophet Yusuf al Islam. No, he was made slave. GG. So this concept of slavery is very old. Yeah, it's not that Islam started this. No, this was existing before as well. But if you look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his teachings, you'll find our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has played a huge role in getting rid of the slavery system in the, from the earth. Allah, yeah, Allah. So yes, Mother Channel, you're watching our role model. It's a very unique and interesting topic and things that I think no matter what your role is, whatever your position is, you can learn from the life of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how he was a leader. But we're going to take a small break now. We've got the Kalam of the day, inshallah. When we come back, inshallah, we'll continue with this topic. So let's go to the Kalam of the day. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Roshni Huzur ki Get started, I get started, I 
حضور کی آمد مرغام بل نور کی آمد مرغام آقا کی آمد مرغام مولا کی آمد مرغام موسیقی تاریخ جب یار آئے جب یار آئے موسیقی حضور کی آمد مرغام بل نور کی آمد مرغام آقا کی آمد مرغام مولا کی آمد مرغام صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ویورز آب مدر چینل ایک ہوپ کہ آپ نے اپنے کلام کو بہت زیادہ دیکھتے ہیں یہ سارے کلام کو ماشاءاللہ ہمیں لسن کریں ان کے دن لیکن ہمارے چلدن لسن کریں اور یہ سارے بیس اپنے دن ہے کہ ہمیں انسٹیل دلوب کے پرافت اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم ان کے دن اور یہ سارے دن میں ہمیں دن کو سلیبریٹ ہمارے دن کو سلیبریٹ ہمارے دن کو سلیبریٹ ہمارے دن But like we said today, in the midst of all this, he was the greatest role model as well. And in this series of programs, we're talking about his role as a role model. And today in particular, we're talking about leadership qualities. And during the break, we were saying that really, you know, one hour, we cannot even really give justice to this topic. And we can only give a few examples. And Tawfiq Bhai said that really all we can do is, you know, for the barakat that we discuss this topic and make people aware that this is a topic that, you know, we need to be proud of that it was such a great role model, the greatest role model. And hopefully we can learn something from it. So, Fikbai, so far we want to really just not even touch so, upon a couple of aspects. Only a few aspects, but another uh, important quality that a leader must have is being able to forgive. Because as a team or those who are under you, you know, the people you know who who, who are going to work with you to take you forward as a system, you know, they will make mistakes with the human beings. Yeah. Humans make mistakes, so they will do certain things that they will affect your own goal. And your vision for the team so you have to have this quality in you that you're able to forgive and not everyone can do that yes so when you look at our life today you know someone makes a mistake and even if we say okay you know what i forgive you but you know what we do we, we remember it. it we remember it yeah. we keep the grudge we keep it inside us and we wait for the opportunity we, yeah we wait for the opportunity and when the opportunity comes that's it all guns blazing you know everything we oh, forget wow, everything wow, wow. We forget our relations, we forget who that person was. Now, I'll give an example before we come to this topic. I know someone, well, I'm aware of them individuals, you can say, or the family, that they had a rift between, uh, you know, grandsons, yeah? And one of the persons said that go, and you know, it's not a nice thing to say, but it's, it's quite old, but my father used to tell me that go and shoot that person, yeah? And you think, you know, they would say, why are you doing that? He's your granddad, yeah? You know what he said to the other person? He said, look, don't think it's your granddad. Think that it's that person's dad. 
And that's his own girl. <laughs> yeah, you know, because when you're angry and you you want to take it all out, you forget what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. And, and this is a real example now I've, I've given to you because it makes you crazy. You know, because you want to take revenge. But when we look at the life of the Prophet وسلم, and we see the example, not one example, many examples of forgiveness. Yeah, and definitely, you know, for a Muslim, we have to look up to them. Yes. We have to try to aspire from them and learn from them and try to implement in our life as well. Because we are the followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the biggest examples I can share with you today on, the, on this particular note is the conquest of Makkah. Allah, Allah, Allah. The victory of Makkah. That was the occasion when Muslims have taken back, they've taken the hold of Makkah al Mukarramah once again. Gee. Yeah, And now the enemies, the people who were on the other side, no, they, they, they were so sh scared and they're shivering. They were so worried. They knew that said out oh, today, Muslims have taken over. And you're just that presence. The Muslims have taken over. This itself was like a death to them. Yeah. yeah. And it's in that gathering, and you know what? In that gathering, you know, when Prophet Sallallahu looked towards this crowd, huge crowd, he could see those people in that crowd who in the whole life, they gave so much trouble to the Prophet Sallallahu yeah. who physically, you know, uh, abused Aqal Salatu Wasalam, who would go and tell the, you know, the, the bad children in the streets to go and throw stones at the Prophet Sallallahu who would throw, you know, the, the flesh you know, onto the body, and intestines, all sorts of things they've done. You no, know, they've done the worst of things to the Prophet Sallallahu all these people. And to his family. And to his family, they were all there. To his daughter as well. You know, they've done all sorts of things. Prophet Sallallahu not just was aware of them in the crowd, but also recognized those individuals. And they could see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they, was, they thought in their minds, they thought that's it, that's it. We, we're finished now. We have no end, nothing for us now. That's it, we've gone. Our you know, future generations, everything stopped now. We've, whatever we've had, that's the, that's, it's like a, it's past. Yeah. Yeah, they were feeling the worst. SubhanAllah, when the lips of this, the greatest leader of mankind, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when his lips moved, SubhanAllah, he, opened, he, he moved his tongue and he said, from now on, I have forgiven you all. Allah, Allah. Yeah, it was an open forgiveness without any conditions. Yeah. And you know, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forgave them all, that was a huge you know, chant and slogans coming out from the public reading the kalima. And many of them people, if not all of them people, read the kalima and became Muslims. Yeah, this is so, called you know, when you when you look at the conquest of Kaaba of, of Makkah Sharif and the acts of that day and you know all aspects of it, you know it's amazing. And again, you yeah, know the, the the fact that he had been hurt, he had been persecuted. Yeah. Not only him, you know, because the feedback by what happens is sometimes if you're hurt, you can take it. Yeah, yeah? you can you can you know you yeah. can hold it on. But when your family are hurt, hurt yeah. when your daughter's hurt, yeah. when your uncle, yeah. your religion. Mentioned. Yeah, you everything about, you know, all the other aspects, personal pain, a lot of people can take. Mm -hmm. People can take pain on themselves, but when it's pain to people that they love, then it's harder. And the Prophet of Allah was in a position now. And if he had wished, and if he had took revenge on that day, nobody would have questioned him. Nobody would have said, you've done wrong. But the hikmat and the wisdom that 1400 years later we're talking about the compassion we're talking about the leadership we're talking about the forgiveness we're talking about the vision we're talking about the leadership qualities of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi this is you know you can roll it all up in there can't you? you can put the vision in there you can put the compassion in there you can put the wisdom in there you can put the forgiveness in there all of it was in them few moments in which the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam openly forgive them all and you know this forgiveness it wasn't just on the tongue yes i was just going to say yes and these people became the Sahabi then, yeah, and they had... And their status was raised. Their status was raised, yeah, and they were so close. So a status to that we can never attain. Yeah, SubhanAllah, Allahu Akbar, yeah, and this is a message for me and you and those who are watching this program today as well. That, you know, regardless of what someone has done to me, that do I not have a role to play? Yeah, you know, especially you know, if it's your Muslim brother or a sister, if it's your parents, if it's the family members, if it's your relatives, your neighbors, you know, something that happened about a decade ago, we still th we're still talking about it. We still have the grudges. I know we, for some reason, you know, I don't know what, what you want to call this, but we don't, we don't let things go. 
we like holding it back. We want to hold it. You know, one thing that I'll say to those people, you know, who are in, in that boat, I, first of all, I understand it's not easy to forgive. You know, if someone actually has done something to you to which affected your status, your personality, it's not easy to forgive. But that's why we see there's so much so much blessings and rewards for forgiving as well. Yeah. So if I know you can't forgive, but remember this: if today, for whatever that person has done, if I'm not ready to forgive, think about this: that on the day of judgment, when I am in the court of my Rabb, and all the wrongdoings that I have done in the whole life, if I'm not forgiving someone today. And even then, I'm, I'm expecting my Rabb will forgive me. Allah. That same Rabb, the same Allah, He is seeing me that I'm not, I'm not forgiving someone else. Yeah, maybe today, if I forgive someone, this act may be, may be so beloved to Allah, and due to this, Allah Ta'ala might forgive you as well. Inshallah. Inshallah. You know, these are things that we need to think. You know, this life is too short to hold grudges. Yeah, let's learn to live in peace. Let's live. Sometimes, you know, as a worst case scenario, Forgive someone from the heart, but because that individual's lifestyle is different, your lifestyle is different, have a mutual understanding, have this agreement, okay, both of us cannot work together in, um, in a particular team, that's fine. If your minds don't, our minds don't meet, it's, it's possible sometimes these things do happen, it's a sad thing, but it does happen. But that doesn't mean you know, everything about him is bad, yeah, just ignore him, you know, but don't say bad things about him, you know, in a nutshell. I'm looking at time, time moving forward. And there's so many things. To play as well. there's, there's so many things that you know we we, all, we can talk about. But one of uh, two things because I want to say both. So let's you. take the package first. Go on, take the package. Oh, let's just take this small package, inshallah, and then we'll come back. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu taala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah has sent His prophets to humanity. Marhaba, Rabbi Alawal. What a glorious month! In this month, there are many virtues that one can attain especially on the night of the 11th and the 12th of Rabbi al -Awl. It is an act of reward to fast on the 12th of Rabbi al out of the joy of the birth of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi Wasallam. However, it is better to keep two fasts. Moreover, by conducting and holding gatherings of Mawlid in this month, blessings and all types of peace prevail in that particular house throughout the year. This has been tried and tested. One should make special arrangements Stay awake on the night between the 11th and the 12th. Perform ghusl, wear new clothes, put on fragrance, express happiness upon the blessed birth, and perform qiyam and salam on that night and that at the time of dawn. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, whatever pious dua one makes, it will be accepted. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Viewers of Malaysia, you're watching our role model, mashallah, another beautiful package there. One thing I also learned just during the break there was that when someone's on a roll, yeah, you shouldn't stop them. Yeah? Because when you stop that roll, then sometimes they can lose the, the track. And towards the end of that package, the feedback is thinking, what were them two things that I was going to talk about? What were them two? And I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's my fault because I stopped him. So I'm going to put him on the spot now. And hopefully he's had enough time and he's probably panicking now. His blood pressure has increased. Gee, the feedback, what were them two things <laughs> that you're going to mention that for a few moments you forgot? We were talking about different leadership qualities. And if you look at the, up to the conquest of Makkah and the life after that, especially the life after that, Alhamdulillah, you know, Thousands upon thousands of people were coming towards Islam from city to city, from country to country. And that's how Islam spread so far and wide. So if you look at the, that particular life, you know, if you look at the number of Sahaba, you know, it's written in books, it's over 100,000 Sahaba. Some have written that it's 124,000, some yeah. have written 115,000. So there were over 100,000 100, Sahaba who lived on, this, on, this, on the face of this earth. And if you look at that, you've got so many people with you. So as a person, as a leader, you know, what type of clothing would you wear? What type of food would you have? What type of uh, palace would you have? If you look, compare the leaders of today. Yes. You know, if, if, you, if you look at the kings, yeah, what do they have? They have all these luxuries, don't they? But may we be sacrificed upon this leader, our master, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa that even after the conquest of Makkah, he chose to live the life of simplicity. He still slept on the ground with 
the the pillow was uh, made of his yeah. shoulders and and the dates palm trees and uh, the the house they were simple homes there was no carpets there was no no air conditions and all these things you know and he could have had the yeah. best house in makkah prophet sallallahu prophet sallallahu ta'ala sallam could have had whatever he wished you know according to one narration the prophet sallallahu ta'ala sallam said that if i want the mountain to become gold and walk with me i can do that but no prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi sallam chose this life of simplicity you know from his own choice yeah and he's left this legacy that you can be simple and you can still be a leader allah yeah? akbar you can still eat simple food and you can still rule the world yeah you can have simplest of clothes but you can still rule the world your know, people will follow you but again if you yeah. compare it to modern day times and you look at you know keep on mentioning the middle east it's that simplicity that Subhan people love yes and so you can understand why at the time of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that simplicity yeah. was there that yeah. compassion was there and that was loved and you know, respected you know now a time like the example that you're giving maybe if amir al sunnah you know had that much finance he had a financial power or yeah he lived in you know you know big mansions and he, his lifestyle was really high maybe he would not have yeah. the same fault i agree with you i agree with you and and you know this this is not it's not a small thing so as a leader you need to make sure that you live your life in such a way that even the people who are below you they don't feel that you are too far from them if you look at it from that angle why you choose to live a life of simplicity so even the people who are really poor they can relate to you they can talk to you you can guide them and they can ask you questions yeah so this connection is so important and now just to summarize our topic if you look at you know leadership qualities you can name loads of points here but one of the key factor of a leader is that that individual must not have the bad leadership qualities for example drugs alcohol you know in our culture you have you know nude pornography and so many things addictions and you know basically uh, anything that can taint the, the character the wealth and you know, all these things that affect your character yeah as a leader you cannot afford to have them and if you look at the life of the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam his life is such pure life that no one can even dare to you know you know, you know even forget forget to for allegation you know, they cannot even question anything yeah because that's how the standard the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alaihi wasallam left behind as a leader and this is something that we need to keep in mind in our day and age as well that we our our personality should be clean should be such that people and don't do not run away from us in particular i'll mention your own family members your parents your friend circles your colleagues those who you spend a lot of time with between this particular circle your character must be clean subhanallah Viewers of the channel, you're watching our role model, and today we're discussing the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the ideal role model with regards to leadership. And we've given a few examples, and to be honest, you know, even me and Tofiq have agreed here during the breaks that we've not only we've really scratched the surface of this. It's such a a vast topic, and so much we can learn to. And you know, the fact that they mentioned the beautiful. uh conquest of kaaba we look at that the fact that that compassion was the the control of the anger was the then we didn't even get the opportunity to discuss the treaty of adabiyah where you know even the companions were doubtful in a sense that you know what are we doing here but the wisdom the vision of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we saw the benefits of it and historians have brought so much about the 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 treaty of adabiyah and all sorts of things so these are all huge aspects of the life of the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if you look at each one of these aspects then you realize that them aspects if we learn from them we act upon them then we can make a change in our life today and these events that tofiq bai mentioned earlier on all of these are beneficial to us if only we can learn from them act upon them and make a change in our society viewers of the channel you've been watching our role model sallu alal habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam love of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam Love of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam